Dave Palumbo with another RX Muscle rant. Guys, Happy New Year. As we know, the New Year's resolutions are upon us and a lot of us you know, may be feeling guilty. We haven't been to the doctor in quite a while. We haven't got blood work done, myself included. I don't know how the year goes so fast. I think I get blood work every two weeks and, and it, I realize I look back and it's been more than six months. So I gotta go for blood work too. But I wanted to talk to you guys about blood work because a lot of guys don't know what to get done. And I've sent out numerous blood work you know, lists for people to go uh, get done. But we're gonna go over blood work. I have the list here. Uh, we're gonna put it up on the screen as I'm talking about it. And I'm gonna explain to you what the different parameters are that you're gonna get tested and what it means, okay? And once again, this is, you know, this is uh, generalizations. Obviously, you know, everyone has their own specific th needs and their own specific you know, uh, idiosyncratic, I guess, results that they get. And, and they mean different things. So I, this is only gonna give you like a, a general overview. So let's go through it. Um, you know, the, the, the thing that most people get done, it used to be called a test called the SMA20. Now it's called the Complete Metabolic Panel, which I think is a much better name. Um, they call it the CMP. And it basically tests your liver, your kidneys, uh, your blood sugars, your electrolytes, blood proteins, cholesterol. So it, it kind of encompasses everything. But I want to break down what everything is. Now the liver function is, is measured in different enzyme levels. Okay, and I didn't list them all because you know you guys can you'll see them on your blood work, SGOT, uh, SGPT, and they they have different names in different in different countries, but they they call them the liver enzymes. And the reason they do that is because if they're elevated, theoretically, that means your liver cells are breaking down and releasing this enzyme into the bloodstream. Um, unfortunately, it, for bodybuilders specifically and people who work out you know vigorously, it's not always an accurate assessment because. Because we work out, we break down muscle tissue constantly, those enzymes that we call liver enzymes are actually metabolic enzymes. They're enzymes that, that, do en that create energy in the cell, you know, that break down carbs and fats and stuff like that and produce ATP. These, en en these enzymes will leak into the, into the bloodstream if you break down muscle tissue. So if, you, if you've worked out really hard for a week in a row uh, and then you go and you give blood work, uh, you, get bl you give blood, excuse me, uh, and they measure these enzyme levels, they could be high, not because your liver is broken down, but because your muscle is broken down. So they're not a, a tremendous indicator of what's really going on in the body in an elite level or a person who really trains hard. And the more muscle you have, the higher these enzyme levels will go because you can break down more tissue. So when I was competing you know, at 300 plus pounds, my liver enzymes would be three, four times the normal range. Now that I'm kind of a mortal human being again, and I don't, really don't train more than two, three days a week because I don't have time, uh, my, my enzyme levels are normal. So, you know, it's, there, is, there is a little bit of a, you know, a specification towards liver, but not, but not always. And so you got to take them with a grain of salt, unfortunately. The only way to really get a true reading would be to take two weeks off from weight training and doing anything vigorous. And then you still might not be completely normal because you have an, 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 an abnormal amount of muscle mass on your body. So try that. Those, those enzyme levels, like once again, they're a pattern. Obviously, if you had hepatitis and you had high liver enzymes, it would mean there was damage there being done. But if you're an otherwise healthy person with no symptoms, they're probably not as relevant. Now, uh, kidney function is much more relevant. Where we talk about BUN, blood urea nitrogen, and creatinine. BUN seems to can go up and down a little more with dehydration, with how much protein you're eating. To me, a true, the best measure of kidney function is creatinine level, okay? That's the waste product that your body produces from protein breakdown. And when you, your kidneys are not working function or not functioning or filtering at, uh, at optimal levels, that level will go up. And when we see people who have kidney issues, we see high creatinine. Now in a bodybuilder, you could probably go to the 1.4 range and still be normal. That's probably okay, but once you go over 1.4 and you start getting into 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, I see bodybuilders, they, they send me blood work, their, their creatinines are in the twos, and these are otherwise seemingly healthy people. That's not good. That means your kidneys are not functioning well. Usually I put these people right on one of my detox programs. I put them on kidney stuff that you can purchase at DavePalumbo.com to get that creatinine down. Very important. That to me is one of the most you know, uh, important values on, on blood work that I get really you know, worried about when I see high on people. So usually people like, they hear me say, oh, don't worry about that, don't worry about the liver. This is something, when creatinine is high, I have a problem with that, and we want to get that, that back down low. We don't want that to creep up. Once that goes into the high ones, into the twos, now you're, now you're talking about you having damage in your kidney, so we don't want that. So that's an important test. A blood sugar, 
Usually fasting blood glucose is all you get really done on blood work. So in other words, that's why they tell you not to eat or drink anything in the morning. And you could really drink water, it's fine. But you don't want to, you don't want to drink any, uh, anything with any kind of carbs in it or protein in it. Um, you want to go in there fasting to get what your fasting blood sugars are and they should be under 90. Even though the blood work usually says 100, you should be under 90. Okay. Uh, electrolytes, that's like sodium, potassium, chloride, um, uh, magnesium, calcium, they'll test all that and see how that's normal. You know, and then there's just different reasons. Some people might have high potassium because of the drug they're taking. Um, uh, some people have low sodium because they're not eating enough salt in their diet. And, and these are things we can diagnose. And it's, it's a relatively simple, like I said, uh, straightforward, you know, uh, result. If your calcium's low, you probably need to take more calcium. Uh, the next value would be, I guess, your, your cholesterol profile, which is really your cholesterol uh, carrying profile. In other words, the cholesterol carriers, and we break them into basically two separate carriers, although there's, there's a lot of in-between in ones, we, we only really measure the HDLs and, and LDLs. HDL cholesterol is your good cholesterol carriers. Those are the carriers that pick up the rogue cholesterol that's kind of hanging out in your body, bring it back to the liver to destroy it. We want that high. Usually when you're on anabolic steroids, that gets suppressed. And there's really nothing that can bring it up. People ask me, what can you take to bring up HDL? Well, it has nothing to do with essential fatty acids and all that stuff like what we're going to talk about in a minute with regard to LDS. Really, the only thing that they found that has any effect on it is niacin, to a certain degree, can raise it a little bit. And even and drinking red wine, believe it or not, raises it a little bit. But um, once again, it's more of an artifact of taking steroids. Uh, my belief is if your LDLs, which is your bad cholesterol carries, are low or normal, you really don't have to be too worried about the HDLs. It's when LDLs are high and HDLs are low, that's like the recipe for disaster. So we want to make sure if you're going to take anabolics, we get those LDLs and keep them low. And what keeps those low? Um, a great fiber supplement. Fiber lowers LDL cholesterol. An essential fatty acid supplement like my Omegalyze formula lowers LDL cholesterol. Taking a uh, monounsaturated fat in your diet like um, macadamia nut oil, extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, lowers LDL cholesterol. So these are, these are we want to keep track of these, of these values for sure. Um, the HDL-LDL ratio is a better, is a better uh, measure of your cholesterol status as opposed to total cholesterol, because total cholesterol just adds HDL and LDL together. Now if we want HDL high and we want LDL low, Adding them together is not going to give us any information, so the ratio of the two is, is better. I just evaluate them each individually. Now, PSA for men is important, prostate-specific antigen. If that's high, it could be an indicator that you have some kind of a, a, a inflammatory thing going on in your prostate, uh, like a prostatitis. It can mean you have prostate cancer, or it can mean nothing. So you want to get that checked out. If that is high, you want to have that further evaluated for sure. All right, the next test we talk about is, is the CBC or complete blood count. That's going to measure your red blood cells and your white blood cells. Um, the red blood cell count in, in steroid users is usually elevated, meaning you're, you're producing more red blood cells. Anabolic steroids tell the bone marrow, produce more red blood cells, which is great from an oxygen carrying uh, capacity standpoint, but it's not so great if your blood gets too thick. Uh, because then it could sludge, you can get clots, and obviously we don't want to have that happen. Now, the good thing is if you're taking a lot of vitamin E and fish oils, that tends to not allow your blood to clot. So I don't tell people to go crazy and start donating blood and get too kooky and worried about high uh, red blood cell counts unless they're astronomically high. Um, now, one of the values when you get, when they break down the different reds, they, they give you red blood cell count, they give you a hemoglobin hematocrit, hematocrit is how thick the blood is, hemoglobin, how much hemoglobin, but there's a, there's a value called a red cell um, hemoglobin, RCH, which tells you how much hemoglobin is in your red blood cells. And you'll find when we talk about vitamin uh, B12 in a minute, if you have too much uh, hemoglobin inside the, the cells, in other words, the cells are really big, it means that you could be anemic. And, and a lot of that times that, per, that anemia is known as pernicious anemia, and it can be due to a B12 deficiency. And that's why we want to check the status of B12. Now, your B12 status could be normal. You could have normal B12, but if your body is not activating the B12, and the way we say, when we say activate, we mean methylating it, it could mean that your body is not able to utilize it well, so your body is making bigger cells. So that's sometimes a, a lot of guys will ask me, why is my uh, MCH you know, high, but my B12 is normal? And I'm like, you're probably not methylating your B12. You might need to take like a methyl cobalamin or methyl B12, same thing, supplement. I do. 
I have normal B12 status, but sometimes um, I know, do notice that my cells can, uh, my, excuse me, my hemoglobin in my cells can be a little excessive. So that's, that's me personally. All right, thyroid function test, TFT tests. That gives you complete status of your thyroid. Your, your thyroid stimulating hormone, the hormone from your pituitary that tells the thyroid to produce thyroxin. Uh, your T4, which is actually your thyroxin that's being produced, but that's the inactive thyroid. And then your active thyroid, okay, which is known as T3, a triiodothyronine. So you want to test all three of those. The most important value, believe it or not, is the T3. Free T3 will tell you everything. If free T3 is normal, okay, your TSH and T4 will most likely be normal, okay? Um, if your TSH is super high, meaning it's, your body's trying to tell your thyroid gland produce more thyroid and it's just not doing it, you're gonna see low T4 and T3. So uh, reverse T3 is, is, an, is a form of T3 that, that is inactivated. So I like to have all four of those tested so you can really see a, a true reading on your thyroid gland. Of course, then we move to uh, testosterone. We want to test the total testosterone plus the free testosterone because it's really the free testosterone that's doing something. But you know what? I know guys that have very, very low total testosterone in their body and they have super high free testosterone. The reason being their body is freeing it all up because there's so little of it. That doesn't mean that they're in a good muscle building state just because they have a lot of free testosterone. So you want high total and high free to optimally build muscle. And a lot of guys that, that do take steroids, you'll see this. You'll see a very high total testosterone and high free testosterone as well. So that's important to test that. Also, we want to test estrogen levels, okay, especially in, in men, to see if we're maybe aromatizing, converting too much of that testosterone into estrogen. Um, now, for women, we, we would still test testosterone because they do still need some. And for, obviously, women don't have testicles. They produce their testosterone from their adrenal glands. The adrenal glands produce DHEA, which can convert into testosterone in small amounts in their body. So we want to test that. And there's normal ranges uh, of that, so we, we can look at as well. Estrogen, once again, we don't want it too high, but we don't want it too low. So we want it in the normal range. And so for men who take you know, uh, anabolic steroids, we probably, you know, a lot of times they also take what's called aromatase inhibitors to prevent that testosterone to con estrogen conversion. But we don't want to inhibit all of it, once again, because then you're not going to grow adequately because estrogen sensitizes the androgen receptors, okay, and it also is responsible for sex drive. So we want estrogen in the normal range. That's why we do these blood work. People say, you think my estrogen's too high or you think my estrogen's too low, Dave? Maybe I should take this. I said, well, how would you know unless you get your blood work done? So that's one of the reasons we get that done. Uh, DHT levels, that's another hormone that your body can convert testosterone into. It can convert it into estrogen or it can convert it via the 5-alpha reductase enzyme system into D dihydrotestosterone. Now, in, in grown-ups, DHT can cause hair loss, acne, um, two things. Uh, can cause prostate enlargement. So we don't want super high DHT levels in the body. We want normal levels. But we don't want high levels. If we have too high, we're going to have side effects from it. If we have too low, we're not going to grow as well or we're going to maybe lose our sex drive. So we want, once again, DHT, just like estrogen, to be in that normal range. That's why I produce a supplement called Testolize. It balances estrogen and DHT which, without plummeting it too low. Now, if you're taking steroids you know, on that, you know, Testolize might work, it might not. You might need something a little stronger. But for the natural bodybuilders, Testolize does an amazing job. That's why a lot of people take it when they're off cycle. All right, um, prolactin is another hormone that's kind of weird. Normally, it's, it's not high, okay? But if you take drugs that, that raise prolactin levels, like the 19 nortestosterone uh, drugs like Decadurabilin, okay, Trenbolone, these drugs can, in some people, and I really believe it's dosage-related more so than it is drug-related. Because a lot of, back in the 90s, when guys only took, you know, a little bit of Trenbolone, you know, and it was in the form of Parable, or they only used minimal DECA amounts, no one complained that much about you know, high prolactin levels. Like No one complained about losing the sex drive, especially on Trembolone. So I think it's dosage related, but the, the key is you want to find out if it's high because if prolactin is high, you can get what's called prolactin-induced gynecomastia, meaning that it, you get actually discharge from your nipple. Not only does the gland get a little bigger, but you actually get a discharge from the nipple. That's not fun, obviously. Also, prolactin will inhibit sex drive, so we don't want to, we don't want to do that either. So, we want prolactin you know, to be in the normal range, so I always like to test it just to be safe. Cortisol is the, uh, is the catabolic hormone that is produced from your adrenal glands in response to stress. It raises blood sugar. Um, it also can suppress the immune system if it's in excessive amounts. 
So I like to get a reading on that because a lot of people don't sleep enough at night. They have very stressful lives and then they wonder why they can't lose weight or, they, or, they, um, or they're losing muscle. Okay, and it could be because of excessive cortisol output. Um, I can't tell you how many people have weight loss you know, desires get stalled by high cortisol levels because it raises blood sugar. And when it raises blood sugar, your body has to release insulin to absorb that sugar. And you know, that's without eating carbs. So you, your body will turn protein into, into glucose and then your body has to release insulin, which is a fat storage hormone. So we don't want that. That's why we don't want to stress the body out too much. That's why taking excessive stimulants People think that, oh, I'll burn more fat with those. You'll actually, you could actually lay down fat if you take too many stimulants. So once again, you want to use that in moderation. Don't drink 18 cups of coffee a day. Don't take 40 pre-workouts a day. You know, two cups, three cups of coffee, you know, at the max is probably okay, and maybe one pre-workout, you know. So don't go crazy with the, with the energy drinks. Vitamin D3 status, very important. Something like 87% of, uh, of Americans, they say, are, are deficient. It's responsible for like 190 chemical reactions in the body. Um, I always test D3 levels. I don't like the, the readings that they give you. When, you. when they give you the range on the blood work you get back, it's usually from like 35 up. The, the minimum you want your, your D3 status to be at is 50. Okay, so it's important that you get that tested. Make sure you're at 50 or higher. Usually it takes anywhere from five to 7,000 I use of vitamin D per day to get you to that level. Um, cyanocobalamin, like I mentioned earlier, is vitamin B12 status. The reason why we test it, it's very difficult to absorb B12 in the body. It has a very unusual absorption route. It has to complex in the stomach with something called intrinsic factor, which then only gets absorbed through a very narrow portion of your small intestine. Uh, and if it misses that area, okay, for whatever reason, you're not going to absorb it. Now, luckily, the body can store it up to 12 months. But people have genetic uh, anomalies that don't allow them to store it. My body doesn't store B12, so I have to make sure I'm always t taking it in. Luckily, I, I have very good B12 status, but once again, if you don't methylate the B12, then that's a problem as well. So sometimes it's a good idea to go buy a methyl you know, cobalamin supplement and take that. But these are things you'll find out by getting your, your, your blood work done. Uh, C-reactive protein, okay? Also CRP it's known as, it measures a total body inflammation. Why do we want to know that? Well, excessive inflammation has been shown to increase the risk of cancer, heart disease, arthritis, all the inflammatory diseases in our body. Um, syndrome X, which is you know, insulin resistance, um, we don't want high inflammation in our body. And, and just by measuring C-reactive, you'll know, you know very quickly if you have high you know, inflammation in your body. Now, I see in a lot of cancer people that I work with, or people who beat cancer or still have it, their C-reactive is through the roof, okay? That's not good, okay? Taking a supplement, look, I'm not trying to push my own supplements here, but I'm just, I designed a lot of these to combat these issues. Taking a product like Omegalyze, which is very high in omega-3 uh, fats, specifically fish oil, uh, high in omega-6 uh, evening primrose oil, also contains something called palmitoleic acid, which is an omega-7 fat, really specifically designed to reduce C-reactive protein, increase insulin sensitivity. These are, that's why I say, you know, constantly over and over and over in all my shows and all these educational series that we do, you gotta take your multi-mineral, multivitamin in, in high potent, you know, absorbable dosages. You gotta take your essential fatty acid supplement. You gotta take your extra vitamin D and you gotta take your fiber supplement. Okay, all these things help keep this blood work optimized, which it's not the blood work it's optimizing, it's optimizing your body. When your body is working adequately, your blood work will come back normal, okay? Once again, there are anomalies for bodybuilders that we need to identify, like we mentioned earlier, you know, liver en enzymes, etc. but by and far, the ones that I talked about here should come back normal. The last one I want to discuss is hemoglobin A1C, and that's a, an, a three-month average, basically, of what your blood sugars are. So if your blood sugars are running high, over the course of you know, three months, and the reason why they do three months is because the, the red blood cell only lasts 120 days in the body, okay? So what happens is if the blood sugars are high, okay, over the course of that you know, 120 days, they're gonna, the, the sugar, the glucose molecule, actually binds to the hemoglobin of the red blood cell. And we can measure this. That's why it's called hemoglobin A1C. And if, once again, if the, if the numbers are high, it means you're agglutinating or binding more glucose because you have high blood sugars throughout the day, and that will give us a reading. Now, we want our values, I believe it's under 5.4 um, you want to be. If you're over that, it means that you're not having tight blood sugar control. 
I would then recommend you go out and get a $9 glucose glucometer or glucose monitor from Walmart and start testing your fasting blood sugars in the morning. Test your blood sugars two hours after your meals. In the morning, they should be under 90. After two hours after your meals, you should be under 130. And if you're running high, then we got to do something about that. And that's something you have to address with your doctor, obviously. But hemoglobin A1C, a nice way to assess what your blood sugar status is over the course of three months. So once again, you can't test everything every single time, but this, if you give this list to your doctor and say, hey, look, I did a lot of research. This is what I want tested when I, when I go for my annual physical. I think that he'd be agreeable and amenable to this. It's not, it's not absurd what you're asking to be tested. And at least you'll have a status of what's going on in your body. You know, combine this with you know, going to a cardiologist you know, over a certain age, over the age of 35 and getting checked every once in a while. You know, EKG, an echocardiogram, possibly a cardiac CT to see the status of your coronary arteries. These are just insurance policies so that you know what's going on in your body. Sticking your head in the sand and not wanting to know what's going on is, is foolish. And once again, I have to take my own advice because sometimes, like months and months pass and I forget, I haven't gone to the doctor, you know, I just moved down to Florida, I don't have all my doctors established here, so um, I have to go as well and I will be bringing my list and I'm sure arguing with the doctor about getting this done as well. But guys, look, I hope this helped you out. I hope it gave you a little insight into blood work and what you want to get done. Once again, I could probably talk about this for six hours try to make it as, as easy and uh, brief as possible. Um, if you like the programming you're seeing, hit subscribe below, hit like, and uh, we'll keep the stuff coming. Once again, Happy New Year, and uh, go to the doctor and get checked out.